Hey there, welcome to the Breeders' Cup Challenge Series recap show. Brittany Erden alongside Joaquin Jaime, and we are paddock side here at Del Mar. What a weekend with a TVG Pacific Classic, a win and you're in for the Longines Breeders' Cup Classic. Joaquin, what was your anticipation and lead up to that race? It was... The, the, the question marks were only just because he's never gone two turns and he's never won the classic run the classic distance of a mile and a quarter. But when you have one of the best horses on the planet in your backyard, mm -hmm. you're just waiting to see what he's going to do the next time he steps onto the racetrack. Flatline was looking to stay undefeated in the $1 million TVG Pacific Classic. Let's take a look back. Let's see, a quarter of a mile to go in the Pacific Classic. Flavion Pratt and Flightline are an embarrassing lead. It must be 15 lengths as they turn for home now. And let's see, Flavion Pratt just shakes the reins at Flightline. And take a good look at this, because you're not going to see this too often. Maybe never again. Flightline, 20 lengths clear. Flavion Pratt takes a hold and canters in in the TVG Pacific Classic. I don't think we have the superlatives to describe what we witnessed in the TVG Pacific Classic. Joaquin, I'm going to make you say something about that performance. <laughs> When he started to run down the backstretch, Flavian just couldn't hold him any longer. It was mm -hmm. almost like he was going down the backstretch saying, we're going too slow. We can go faster. And nobody was able to keep up with him. 126 mm -hmm. was the number for the buyer speed figure. He mm -hmm. ran a mile and a quarter in 159 and one in an absolute jog. The winning margin was 19 and a quarter lengths. It could mm -hmm. have been 119 and a quarter lengths if he was able to run down the stretch. An absolutely amazing performance. Mm -hmm. One of the best single race performances from a thoroughbred racehorse that we have seen in recent memory. Trevor Denman probably said it best in the call. We may never see this again. Well, we had the opportunity after on Saturday to catch up with all the connections. Let's listen. Flavian, I'm just in absolute disbelief. Tell me, how did it feel to open up on this field like that? What a privilege. It's amazing. Horses around me, first time going a mile and a quarter. I, I was just trying to get him to relax. He actually relaxed while well on the backside. And uh, I, I mean, when, when I look back, I, I, it's just amazing to, to, to be on him and be part of him. It's, it's crazy. What just happened? That's Flightline. America's, America's favorite horse. Just. He, he he did his thing, so yeah. I guess a mile and a quarter is in his will house. You knew at the Malibu, when you talked to TVG, now FanDuel TV afterwards, you said this was a once-in-a-lifetime type horse, and he really showed that here. Yeah, he really did. You know, he trained um, sensational for this race. Um, we had a lot of confidence going in, but, but you know, they got to go out and do it. You know, the distance was the question today, and he answered the question. Uh, no doubt about it. Some connections that are really appreciating what they have at hand. Flightline stays undefeated. A remarkable performance there. Earlier in the day, though, another spot on the line for the Longines Breeders' Cup Classic. That was at Saratoga in the Grade 1 Jockey Club Gold Cup, a contentious field. Let's see how it played out. It's Olympiad in front. On the outside is American Revolution now coming to him. Olympiad has the lead with 3 16 to the finish. And then American Revolution. Olympiad in front inside the eighth pole. Then American Revolution down at the rail is untreated. They're inside the 16th pole. And Olympiad leads American Revolution. Olympiad gets the gold in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Finally. Olympiad gets his grade one victory and gets another spot, per se. He already secured his spot in the Stephen Foster, but I think it's the grade one that was big for him. There. And he's had a very good season this year. He's now six for seven in 2022. His buyer speed figure came back 105, just to give you a little bit of comparisons how mm -hmm. otherworldly flight line was in the TVG Pacific Classic with the 126, 105. Darn solid performance for mm -hmm. Olympiad in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Just prior to the Jockey Club Gold Cup, the ladies took the stage on the turf course in the flower. A win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. Warlike Goddess is coming up now in between horses as they move down for the eighth pole. It is Virginia Joy and Costana. Warlike Goddess now into third. Virginia Joy is still there. Then it is Costana. And here is Warlike Goddess kicking in late. Virginia Joy, Warlike Goddess, Virginia Joy, the German bread, upsets the field. Well, Virginia Joy upsetting Warlike Goddess, the very heavy favorite in the Flower Bowl. 
very slow fractions too. 53 and one was the half mile. 119 and two was the three quarter split. One mile and 145. I ride Ortiz able just to walk the dog out there on the front end for a wire to wire victory in the Flower Bowl. And back here at Del Mar, it was the 11th and final race, the Del Mar Handicap, a win and you're in for the Long Jeans Breeders' Cup turf, a very big and competitive field as we're getting used to here at Del Mar. Let's see how that one played out. Gold Phoenix is finishing strongly in the center of the track. This one's wide open. Coming for home, Tango, Tango, Tango. Dicey Mo Cara at the rail. Dicey Mo Cara gets through. Masterpiece on the outside and Gold Phoenix coming flying. Gold Phoenix on the outside. They hit the wire. Close. Looked like Gold Phoenix. Man well, Flavian Pratt had a good day back here at Del Mar. Gold Phoenix taking the Del Mar handicap. That is seven of the last nine Del Mar handicaps for trainer Phil D'Amato. This one for Little Red Feather. So a big victory there. The following day, the Green Flash handicap. That was new to the Breeders' Cup Challenge Series. A win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. We had the defending champion, Lieutenant Dan, in there. Did he repeat? Find out. Lieutenant Dan has room at the rail. Oh, and he sneaks through down there. Lieutenant Dan now strikes the front. Coming with a late run as Lane Way. Down the center of the track. Here's Coltard with a nice run too. But Lieutenant Dan, too good. Lieutenant Dan won it. How cool of a horse is Lieutenant Dan? This is the first of four Breeders' Cup winning your ends for this particular division in the turf sprint. California bred repeats in the green flash. I talked to Steve Miata before the race, and he was mm -hmm. saying he was worried about the post position, but Juan Hernandez able to work out a great trip, getting down to the inside. The rail opened up for him, and an easy win off the long layoff in his six-year-old debut. Uh, he ran huge last year. Hope to see it again this year. He secured a spot in the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. Okay, that was a massive week weekend across the country really what do we have coming up this weekend well a lot from Kentucky down so we've got a win and you're in for the fan duel uh, win and you're in for the turf sprint is the fan duel turf sprint coming to you from Kentucky Downs and also the Kentucky turf cup which is a win and you're in for the Longines Breeders Cup turf and there are five repeat that five <laughs> win and you're in races on Irish Champions weekend at the Curra and Leopardstown getting closer and closer to the Breeders Cup just two months away for the Breeders Cup at Keeneland Racecourse in early November it's wild can you feel it <laughs> Yeah. Can you feel the and excitement? All these winning events are going to start piling up as we get closer and closer, too. Looking forward to it. Breeders' Cup at Keeneland once again. Fans on hand for it as well. Really looking forward to that. So this was the Breeders' Cup Challenge Series recap show. We'll see you next time.